Hi, and welcome to this video on Geometric Series, Part 2, brought to you by the Answer Series. In this video, we are going to be looking at a formula for the sum to infinity, which is something new. But before we can start with that, we need to first have a look at the difference between a convergent geometric sequence and a divergent geometric sequence. So everything depends on the ratio. If you have a ratio which lies between minus 1 and 1, then your sequence is defined as convergent. By definition, r cannot equal 0, so it's not even stated here. You will not have a geometric sequence if you have a ratio of 0. If you have a divergent sequence, your r value will either be less than minus 1 or greater than 1. In other words, if you have a ratio of 2 or a ratio of minus 3, that is a divergent sequence. On the other hand, if you have a ratio of a half, a third, minus a quarter, minus an eighth, any of those ratios, you will have a convergent sequence. I want you to pause the video and try these eight examples on your own, and then I will go through them with you to make sure that you understand the basic concept. In example 1.1, the sequence is convergent, and it is convergent because the ratio is a half. In example 2, the sequence is divergent, and it is divergent because the ratio is 5, which is greater than 1. In example 3, the sequence is convergent because the ratio is a third. In example 4, it is neither convergent nor divergent because the ratio is 1. In example 5, the sequence is divergent because the ratio is 3 over 2. In 1.6, the sequence is divergent because the ratio is 2. In 1.7, the sequence is convergent because the ratio is a half. And in 1.8, the sequence is convergent because the ratio is a third. Pause the video and take another look if you need to. Now we're going to derive an actual formula for the sum to infinity, remembering that the sum to infinity can only be determined if your ratio lies between negative 1 and 1. Now, what you need to do is complete the statement, work out what happens to the result if the ratio is raised to the power of n, and that question is being worked out not for n as any number, but as n tending to infinity. So even a 1,000 would be too low. Infinity is bigger than the biggest number you can imagine. And as that ratio is raised to that incredibly large infinite value, you need to work out what the sum to infinity formula will do. Try it on your own and then I'll go through it with you. If we imagine that the ratio is, for example, a half, then a half to the power of 10 is a small number but it certainly is not zero. One over 1024 has a significant value that we cannot ignore. But if we took one over two and raised it to the power of 10 million, which is still not an infinitely large, but if we did this, the answer would now be very, very small. The larger that index is, the smaller the result becomes. And so we eventually decide that we can accept the fact that as n tends to infinity, r to the n will tend to zero. This means that in the formula, r to the n becomes zero if we're working with a sum to infinity. So the sum to infinity on the, in the numerator only has a, and in the denominator, it has one minus r. Notice that there are only three variables in the sum to infinity formula. The sum to infinity itself, which is the result, the ratio, and the a value. There are four examples for you to apply what you understand or to see if you can do anything and then I will go through them with you. So pause the video. In each case, the first thing you do is identify the A value and the R value. And once you've done that, you simply substitute both A and R into the formula. In the first example, your answer will be 40. In the second example, your ratio is going to be a third your a value is 1, you substitute those values into the formula and you end up with 3 over 2. 
In question 2.3, your ratio is a half, your A value is 12 over 5, and your sum to infinity is a rather clumsy calculation which produces an answer of 4,8 or 24 over 5. You can decide which you prefer. And then finally, in 2.4, we have the first term of 36, we have a ratio of a third. We substitute both A and R and we end up with a result of 54. So a basic question on sum to infinity is very, very easy to do. This is the last example in this video. It's going to take you a while to get through these questions. I want you to pause the video, try each of these on your own, and then I will go through them with you one at a time. What's slightly different in the question is that this time you're given the ratio and the result because you're given the sum to infinity. So your job is to work out the A value. You're simply going to write down the formula and then substitute. So substituting a half for the R value and six for the sum to infinity, you will find that two A is equal to six and A is equal to three. In question 3.2, you have the same A value that you've just worked out, A equals three and the R value they gave you and now you're working out the eighth term. So you are using the TN formula, TN equals AR to the N minus one. Substitute and work out the answer. Three multiplied by a half, all to the power of seven, gives you a result of three over 128. Remember, do not multiply three by the half. First work out a half to the seven, which is one over 128, and then multiply by three. In question 3.3, we are working out the value of n. So the result of this sum formula is given, and we are going to substitute a equal to 3, r equal to a half, into the formula provided. Try the question on your own, and then I will help you with it. Using the conventional formula, substitute a, substitute your half, and put the result in. In this question, we have no idea what n is. So we're going to simplify what we can. So we divide three by a half to get six. Then we divide both sides by six, which gives us a result on the right of 31 over 32, which is why a half to the n is one over 32. You can manipulate this differently, or you can get that step by inspection. Break 32 down into two to the five. So one over 32 is a half to the power of five. And that tells us that n equals five. You can, if you prefer, solve this question with logs. 3.4 is a problem solving question. We are not being asked to find the value of P, so don't waste your time doing that, it does not help. What we have been asked to do is to express the expression on the right side in terms of P, which means we need to make that expression look like the one on the left in order to be able to see what's happening. So we're going to start by taking the value on the left and writing it slightly differently. So on the left, we have three times two to the power of one times two to the minus K. On the right, we have 24 times two to the minus K. So now we can see what they have in common with each other and what is different and therefore causing a problem. So they both have two to the minus K. What we need to do now is find out a way of using the 24 and comparing it with the three by two. So what we're going to do is take the 24, we're going to split it up so that we get the three times two that we need times two to the minus K. Now this is worth six and six divides into 24 four times. So from there, we can create the result because the four is independent of K. What we need to do now is just look at a neat way of writing everything up. So we're going to take the 24, we're going to split it into the relevant factors, four times three times two. The four gets split off and written in front because it has nothing to do with K or, and nothing to do with the outcome that we need. We leave the three in front, we take the two 
and we combine it with the 2 to the minus k so that we can express that as 2 to the 1 minus k because the exponents can be added. So there's an invisible 1, and we add the 1 and the minus k to get this result. Now we have four times the exact expression that they gave us. So all we need to do is write down the answer as 4 times p. I strongly recommend that you take another look at this and then try it again on your own. Thank you for watching this video, brought to you by the Answer Series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.